Hello, this is Paul from Play Magazine, and this is the first in a series of videos where we'll be looking back at the history of Deus Ex. Obviously, Mankind Divided has just been recently announced, so it now seems like an ideal opportunity to look back on a series which is very well renowned. Now, many of you would have played Human Revolution, but may not necessarily have played the original Deus Ex game, so in this video, that's the, the game we'll be focusing on. So part of the point of this is to kind of explain why it is that that game is considered one of the best of all time, why it's so um, revolutionary, why it was such an influence. Um, but also to see whether it still holds up today, whether the way people talk about it in those revered tones is, is a function of their, their fond memories of the game and, and whether it's actually that good going back and playing it today. As we go on in the series, we'll also cover um, the second Deus Ex game and Human Revolution. But for, for this first episode, it will just be the first game we're looking at. So Deus Ex was originally released in 2000 on PC. There was also a PS2 version in 2002, though I think everyone would accept that that was a, a far inferior version. In the game you play as JC Denton, who's a member of a government organisation called UNATCO. Much like in Human Revolution, he's cybernetically enhanced, so you can get a, a variety of abilities throughout the course of the game that change what he's able to do. So, for example, you can get super strength that allows you to move objects that, that would perhaps open up new routes for you. Uh, or you can get a shield which will reduce the damage you take from bullets, that kind of thing. So as you can probably guess from that, this game's got strong RPG element, as well as some first-person shooter mechanics, much like other games in the Deus Ex series. This is far more of an RPG than Human Revolution, though. So, for example, um, the accuracy of your shots is, is linked to your stats and the stats of your weapons, so it's not just a case of if you point at somebody um, and aim at the right place, you will hit them, like it is in Human Revolution. That RPG element continues to the way that you build your character, and that starts to get to the heart of what it is that made Deus Ex so special and why it's regarded as, as such a great game. So there's a whole variety of skills that you can choose to, to upgrade, uh, both when you start the game and as you gain experience throughout it. So you have a lock picking skill, for example, um, electronics, hacking, then there's skills related to using specific uh, weapons. So there's pistol skill, rifle skill, and so on. Depending on what you choose to upgrade, both in terms of skills and your cybernetic enhancements, there's different ways that you can approach the levels, different routes that you can take. The game really is very open as well. Um, going back to it, I, I remember a lot of people criticising Human Revolution for not being as open as it claimed to be, and, and their criticism was that it basically had a stealth route and a shooter route. Um, whether that's the case or not, we'll, we'll talk about when we get to Human Revolution, but certainly the first Deus Ex is, is very open. There's so many different ways you can do it. Early on in the game, I was thinking, oh, maybe this isn't as open as, as we remembered, but playing on a bit further, it, it certainly is, and there, there's so many different ways you can do things. What I think makes Deus Ex special, though, is it doesn't really telegraph the, the choices to you. Um, obviously, it's making a point of it's up to you how to play the game, but it doesn't ever confront you with, right, now you can decide to do this or you can decide to do this. Um, it's quite happy for you to miss out on the whole parts of the game and not know those things are there. And I think that makes it all the more special when you realise that there are, are different ways you can do things. Um, just to give one example, there's a, a boss you come across early, early in the game and if you had done enough exploring, looking around people's computers and, and so on earlier on in the game, it's possible to discover a way of, of killing that boss instantly. Um, again, no, nobody tells you this. This is, isn't something that the game will um, sort of give you hints towards. These are things that are just put in the world that you could discover. Um, alternatively, you can fight the boss as, as normal and defeat them, or you can actually be, get killed by them and, and the game continues. And I think it's important to remember how mind-blowing that was at the time, the fact that the game could respond in such a variety of ways and that you could have that kind of effect on it. And going back to the game, I think it's that element that, that really holds up. Um, the game certainly doesn't look pretty. In fact, at the time, it wasn't even particularly spectacular. But that sense of, of openness is still there and is, is still appealing. And again, I think the fact that the game doesn't telegraph all the options for you, that it leaves them so that when you do discover something and you think, oh, I can't believe I could have done that there's, that, there's a sense that there's a whole load of stuff that you haven't seen and that makes the game feel more open and feel more uh, amenable to the way that you want to approach it. 
There are elements of the game that certainly don't hold up very well though. Um, the Deus Ex series always makes a big deal out of the fact that you can play it how you want in terms of you can play it stealthily, you can play it as a shooter. And yes, you can play Deus Ex as a shooter, but it's really not a very good one. It's, it's really not satisfying to play as a shooter. I think you to get the best out of it, you really do have to play it as a stealth game. So in, in that respect, it certainly um, doesn't hold up to Human Revolution, which I think is far more, more capable um, as a first person shooter. Also, there's a lot of um, skills and so on that feel somewhat superfluous. So to give one example, hacking, all you do to hack is you click a button that says hack and a bar goes down. You can hack high level security systems in the game without really upgrading the skill. It just means you get less time in the system. So aside from the fact that it's no fun to, to hack things, it kind of feels pointless to upgrade that skill. There's things like the, the health system, um, each of your limbs are damaged individually, which is kind of interesting in, in the way that if your legs get damaged then you can't run, for example. Um, but it doesn't really have an effect on how you play the game, it's simply a case that if you need to heal then you heal, it doesn't feel all that important or interesting. That type of thing is though perhaps a consequence of having a game that wants to be so open and ambitious, like you implement all these different skills and all these different ways to play and you're perhaps not going to get a game that's as, as polished or as focused in some way so perhaps that's a, a sacrifice you make and that might be something that's interesting to talk about when we get to human revolution and, and how that game game does things also uh, it's worth noting that this game does feel like it's very reliant on the fact that it's a pc game in terms of it feels like having a quick save is kind of fundamental to the way that the game plays it's very easy to make a mistake in this game. In, I mean, you don't have a mini map or vision cones as you would in Human Revolution, other, other modern games. Um, so it can be quite difficult to tell when you're in a position where the enemy can see you when you're not. So it kind of feels like the quick save needs to be there and easily accessible and, and it feels somewhat built around that, which is, is perhaps a problem. It'll be interesting when we get to Human Revolution, which does have a mini map and vision cones and those sort of things whether that's giving you feedback that's important to playing the game in a, in a different way um, about the breaks you might get from a quick save. Another element that doesn't hold up particularly well is the story. Um, the dialogue is, is not particularly well written. JC Denton as a protagonist is thoroughly uninteresting. Um, a lot of the other characters as well are very stereotyped. The story is, is itself as a whole isn't necessarily bad, even though it might not be written well with those individual moments. Um, Perhaps that's a, a part of the function that you've got. A feels like you've got a choice over how things happen, though. So, this whole story it tells of conspiracy and double crosses. You're more engaged with it because you feel like you have an impact on on how it plays out. So, in that in that way, it's interesting. Um, and again, even though the the world itself doesn't look that good, there's something about the cyberpunk feel, the tone of it, the conspiracy thing that makes the world an interesting place to inhabit, even if it might not um, look particularly interesting from the outside. As a whole, though, the, the game definitely holds up. It might be a, a struggle to get used to some of the idiosyncrasies of older games, but it still shines through as a brilliant game, even going back to it all these years later. It's going to be interesting playing the later games after going back to this original and seeing the building blocks and seeing how they might have been tampered with and, and changed over time. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, before we get to Human Revolution, of course, we'll have to play Deus Ex 2. It's considered to be, or it was considered to be, not a very good game at the time of release. Um, people have said since that it wasn't as bad as people might have thought. It was just the fact that it was following in the footsteps of, of what some said was the best game ever and... It got a bit of a hot, tough break because of that. But we will find that out in the next episode. So come back and, and join us for that. Add onwards to Human Revolution.